Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure being here. And uh, let me start by introducing myself. Uh, I am Juan Carballo. I'm a risk and markets uh, manager with Cepsa Gas Comercializadora, which is the natural gas branch of Cepsa, the oil refiner in Spain. Second, I would like to uh, thank the Universidad Politécnica and uh, Jose Luis Almazán in particular uh, for uh, calling me up. And uh, now uh, let's uh, go straight to the presentation itself. Uh, I'm going to share with you uh, and this LNG Bankers issue and uh, we are going to see that the future is already here. This is a, a, the a Viking Race. It's a ferry which is LNG powered. Uh, it's working oper in operation in, in Scandinavia. And uh, of course, uh, it's quite well known. LNG bunkers are more popular in Northern Europe and uh, until very recently they seem to be um, not a factual issue in Southern Europe. But recently we, ch we reached the turning point. There is a lot of momentum coming up. And this is a project from Balearia, the Spanish uh, ferries company, to come up with the fifth largest ferry in the world. It will be indeed the most environmentally clean one ever built and uh, it will be dual fuel. That means that it will be, uh, it will have the flexibility between uh, bunkering with LNG, like a liquefied natural gas or a gas oil. The decision to build it up will be taken in the following months. But bunkers is already a well-established business. Bunkers in general means the fuel that all the ships worldwide need to move. The, if we analyze the conventional bunker market, and looking back into 2012, we can see that the overall demand amounted for 246 million tons. That's a huge volume that corresponds to between 10 and 20% of the overall oil products demand worldwide. From this global volume, CEPSA, my company, is supplying 10 million tons, which means approximately 5% of the overall business. Conventional bunkers that ships are currently taking mean gas oil on the one hand and fuel oil on the other hand. At the moment, fuel oil amounts for 80% of the total demand. But the world is changing. Environment is a very important issue and uh, there is the global 
energy policy that has come out with the sulfur emissions control. There are two areas in the world called emission control areas. The, the North, Northern American territorial waters and on the other hand, the North Sea and the Baltic Sea that already control the emissions of sulfur that uh, ships issue when they are out in the water. This control means that a maximum of 0.1% sulfur can be emitted. That's since early this year. This is only restricted to two areas, as we have mentioned, but between 2020 and 2025, the restrictions area is going to be increased. For certain, to the whole of the European Union waters. But probably it might turn global if the International Maritime Organization approves the Annex 6 that will reduce worldwide the, uh, the sulfur emissions in the, in the sea down to 0 0.5. The implication of this reduction because of regulation means that fuel oil will not be any longer a fuel of choice. Fuel oil is currently the cheapest alternative that ship owners have to power their vessels and that's why it's massively utilized. We mentioned the 80 percent of current market share by fuel oil. Therefore, since regulation is making things change, let's look from the ship owner perspective of the fueling alternatives that they are going to have from now onwards. First of all, on top of the triangle, we can see the fuel oil that is currently 80% of the market share that is going to be a need a scrubber if ship owners want to keep using this fuel. Scrubber is a filter for sulfur. Marine gas oil, 20% of current, current market share, is the most expensive fuel, but it will fulfill the coming Few, uh, sulfur emission requirements. And thirdly, liquefied natural gas, the brand new fuel for ships, which currently has virtually 0% mar market share, which is much cleaner in terms environmentally. The price of LNG would be comparable per energy unit to the fuel oil and scrubber, whereas marine gas oil turns out at twice the price. In fact, we believe that the scrubber or filter for fuel oil is not going to be a real option in the future due to first operational problems with the closed loop that is going to be required and secondly to some incremental costs 
there uh, that have shown up and therefore ship owners might not be using this option which leaves us with a segment instead of a triangle where marine gas oil is going to fight with liquefied natural gas for the for the market for achieving a larger market 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 share of the bank, bunker market and that will be leveled by this green triangle with three drivers on top indeed differential cost in operational expenses opex secondly the security of supply which is crucial issue for ship owners since they need to ensure that according to their standard operation they can refuel anywhere they need at any time they need and thirdly of course environment the environment we we have seen before already that global energy policy is taking care more and more about environmental issues and this is becoming one extremely important driver as of now and it will even be more important for the coming years therefore if we take all the all these three drivers into consideration in our view this equilibrium between both fuels will be swifted towards liquefied natural gas and that's where we have we've got a chance for, for selling in enormous volumes of natural gas to the bunkers industry now let's talk a little bit about logistics and security of supply which was the second of the drivers we saw in the previous slide this map tries to depict the imports of LNG into Europe in 2014 the green spots illustrate where there are LNG plants and the yellow arrows depict the volume and percentage of the total imports in Europe that took place that year first point I want to make is that there is a widespread network of LNG plants all over Europe there are 20 in all but out of those 20 eight are down in the Iberian Peninsula with, and uh, in 2014 nearly 45 percent of the overall imports entered Europe through that way I want to stress as well that because the SECA areas are in Northwest Europe the current demand is already there but southern Europe is well prepared with infrastructure in order to supply any incoming demand let's have a look at the infrastructure in Spain sure for bunkering there is a lo necessary logistics which is pretty expensive and that might be deterring the development of such new industry segment 
Spain, in fact, is really an LNG country. We've seen that there are seven large LNG plants for imports. There are more than 400 small-scale LNG plants inland, which are supplied by 45,000 trips by truck yearly. If we consider the required logistics for bankers or logistic solutions, Spain has already in place the simplest one, which is trying track to ship or TTS. We have the plants, we have the trailers, the semi-trailers or trucks, and therefore we are ready to bunker from a truck to any ship that shows up in any Spanish port at the moment. There are other solutions for bunkering LND. And these are through a barge or from a small scale. Small scale plant that is not built as yet in Spain now. The remaining infrastructure to be built up or invested on is therefore barges to supply ship owners and the small scale plants that might be needed in ports where there are not large scale energy plants. CEPSA, my company, actually delivered the first LNG bunkers ever in Spain. It was back in 2012. It was a TTS truck to ship delivery done in, a, in Algeciras to the MS Hoidel. So 40 metric tons were delivered by pipe uh, in four hours by two trucks. So LNG bunkers, it's a reality in Spain nowadays. This picture is illustrating what a uh, LNG plant looks like in terms of uh, supplying bunkers. This is the main jetty for discharging the imports of LNG, the storage tanks eventually could we export big tankers to Asia or wherever, the regasification facilities, track loading, the track loading station, and what is of utmost importance for our case here is the breakboard jetty, smaller jetty that can be fed from the LNG tanks in order for a barge to be berthed and loaded. This barge will eventually sail and uh, either feed other small scale plants and work as a feeder or deliver bunkers in the in the anchoring area in the in this port. Well in Spain I insist we have seven LNG large scale plants like this. Let me now share with you a couple of questions which are key to this issue of LNG bunkers. On the one hand, how would fuel prices affect the banker markets? On the other hand, what are really 
the main challenges for LNG to become the reference bunker for fuel. And uh, let's try to simply answer the first one. The answer is simple. The spread or differential between gas oil and LNG over time is going to dictate what the bunk, the, the market share for each of the fuels will be like. According to Boston Cons Consulting, by 2025, the market share for LND will range between 5% and 27% of the total market, of the total worldwide market. The, their best case scenario is 20%. I would like to point out in this sense that only three years ago, this base case scenario for market share of LND for the same consultant was below 2%. So I insist we have reached the momentum, the turning point towards LND bunkers have already come. Let's uh, face now the second question I came up with earlier. What are the main, LNG, uh, the main challenges for LNG to become the fuel, of, the fuel of reference in the bunkers industry? Of course, this is not unique to this industry. There has been a cash shortage in the shipping industry for years. Shipping margins have been narrow, freights are Freight rates are low, and this is not the paradise for ship owners. We, we have to cope with this. It's not going to be changed in the short term, or at least these are the prospects. Second, this who, invest, who invests first challenge, it's like the well-known egg and chicken dilemma. Is the demand going to invest in infrastructure first, like buying new LNG-powered vessels, or is it going the supply side, building, the, building up the infrastructure which is required to supply the demand? So far, there's been like a wait and see attitude by ship owners like trying to uh, for the supply side to invest first there there has been some indications very recently from the leaders of some of the sectors of the shipping industry, like we saw the Balearia instance, Carnival, the largest cruise comp cruising company in the world, has recently released a statement that they are going to build some dual-powered vessels, large cruises as well. So there is this dilemma is getting sorted out at the moment. Of course, lack of infrastructure is another important challenge. We have seen that actually Europe is getting ready for the launching of this industry. Probably this is going to remain a challenge in Asia, where much of the demand for LNG bunkers might come up, the US is certainly 
also well supplied in terms of infrastructure is the paradise for LNG. Then there is this point with space limitations on board of the ships. Ship owners live out of the net space that they can provide with to their clients. And the LNG bunkers take on board per unit of energy twice as much volume as gas oil does. This is a drawback, a drawback that uh, needs to be taken into consideration as well. Next, next is regulation, both at the global scale, we saw the increasing restrictions on emissions in sulfur, in NOx or nitrogen oxides, they are coming up as well. That's global, but we, we need to go down to the local arena as well. Standards in ports need to be set up for clear standardization of the operation, safety, efficiency. We are on the way and we are certain that when the demand is there, regulation will be fully ready. And finally, training. We are on to that. Training is of utmost importance to develop this new industry. In my view, we have to extrapolate the immaculate performance that the LNG tankers industry has shown for many years in terms of both safety and efficiency. And we, this has to be extrapolated through training to smaller scale operations in ports. We, we, we've gone through the several challenges and uh, now we'll focus on how to face those. The answer seems very simple to me, through strong coordination and cooperation between all stakeholders involved. And why? In order to climb faster the learning curve and consequently reduce costs, which is the key. We are in a competing world. The fact that we are going to coordinate and co and uh, everybody and coordinate and cooperate between state stakeholders doesn't mean that each company does not need to assume full responsibility on their own business risk. So coordinating, but each one assuming the risks, that's the key. What are the main stakeholders? The ship owner, of course, is going to be the customer ship. And they are going to be helped by shipyards, engineering companies, engine manufacturers and classification societies in order to come up with efficient environmental and uh, brand new vessels that LNG suppliers, which is our role, are going to to fuel in competitive conditions and with security of supply. The role of port authorities and institutions in general is to regulate and set up the conditions so that this industry performs adequately. 
So to insist, stakeholders share a target, but hold their own risks. And collaboration is the key for global success. Let's move on to what's the added value that we, as LNG bunker suppliers, are going to uh, take. There are two main values to add. First of all, we need to guarantee a security of supply to the ship owners. And how? Through a diversified portfolio of LNG. This is the case for SEPSA Gas Comercializadora. On the other hand, we need to be willing to assume their own risk, our own risk, sorry. And which is that? Price risk. This is what we are familiar with. So we need to produce price formulas linked to gas oil for removing this price risk from the ship owners. They need to focus on other risks which are theirs, like shipping margins and their business risk, but not ours. This is crucial, I insist. And apart from that, what's the natural gas market's overall trend doing in respect to this new surging industry? There is a, what I call the double convergence of price in the world. First of all, in, at the global scale, liquefied natural gas is gaining on the one hand liquidity and on the other hand flexibility with a lot of uh, increasing supply from shale gas sources. America and Australia are the clearest examples. On the other hand, at the European scale, natural gas is converging in prices between the different markets thanks to the gas, tar gas target model that the European Union, the Commission, is implemented. The result of that is that Europe is becoming a hub to hub market where all the country markets all the hubs are getting linked and uh, making price converge over the long term. At the moment, in Northwest Europe, all markets are already interconnected. In the next coming years, Southern and uh, West, uh, Eastern European hubs will join the club and uh, we will have uh, an interhubs market by 2020. This is our expectation. So our, our forecast of the natural gas market trends summarizing is that there is going to be a sustained price convergence for the three main basins in the world. And on top of that, LNG is becoming more and more important and therefore it will be setting the marginal price in the international markets. And I want to end up with uh, some brief conclusions. I want to pass on just four clear messages. First, liquefied natural gas is a competitive shipping fuel. It is outstanding at the, as the most environmentally friendly among all fossil fuels. Second, 
investment in LNG infrastructure has been already implemented in Europe, mostly. Thirdly, our role as LNG bunkers suppliers is to be key players if ship owners are to take firm inf investment decisions in new LNG powered vessels. They need us to support them with price formulas adequate to their requirements. Finally, what's the role of the overall natural gas in this new increasing industry? The increasing weight of the LNG in the international markets is going to help the security of supply and facilitate the the more aggressive pricing schema schemes that can be offered to the demand. And uh, this is all I, I wanted to share with you. Mm, thanks a lot for your attention. And of course, be there very welcome for any questions that you might uh, come up with. De los Ajab y Bulgaria. De los Ajab y Bulgaria, pregunta uno. Ajab a cuestión, al medio de la Esta es una, que es la gran novela. Es que. Estoy en mío. Ahí. There, there seems to, to, to be a, a couple of questions related to the hubs in, 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 in Europe. I, I need to tell you that uh, the only liquid hubs that currently are working in Europe are the Novos Europe ones. And to, to keep it brief is the TTF in Holland and the NBB in the UK. These are the only fully functioning hubs at the moment. There are some developing ones that are well interconnected with those two, which are the, 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 the PEG in France, the PSB in Italy, and some other around. This is where we have to work at the moment in order to make a connection from all the uh, peripheral hubs that are being created at the moment and the already well-functioning ones that I mentioned. Yeah, I would like to know if the liquefaction of gas affects the price for energy. The liquefaction of, of gas has a, a, a relative importance on the price of LNG indeed. You need to, to have very expensive 
facilities, like the way they are being built up in the US, the first uh, cargo of LNG from Sabine Pass is about to be exported now. And uh, these facilities need to be amortized long term. So long term. So the off takers of the LNG need to pay a liquefaction fee, which is going to be constant in order to achieve uh, importing contracts. Liquefaction plants can be either brownfield if they take advantage of existing regas LNG plants, importing plants like the ones in, in, in Spain that used to be present in the US because the US were, were, used to be an importing market that's shifting now. And uh, you can have greenfield liquefaction plants which are built up from nothing and therefore then they are a lot more cost. So, there seem to be no more questions. So, thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you.